Don't worry, we've all been there. You go to check on your baby larva and mold and fungus have completely taken over. There's no larva to be found. It has happened to me many times before, but this problem does have a solution. And now I'm gonna show you how I fixed it. Black soldier fly has a life cycle of about 40 to 45 days, but today we're going to focus on the hatching stage when the larvae emerge from their eggs and begin feeding on a nutritious diet that will carry them through the first five days of their life. This is the one stage in which a small investment in nutritious feed can really help boost your larva production. And your investment will go a long way because the larvae are so tiny in this stage that a little bit of feed can really get them off to a great start. When done correctly, you'll end up with a consistent survival rate of healthy young larvae that can then be used to break down a wide variety of organic waste. Now the two hardest stages to control in black soldier fly farming are the fly stage, when conditions have to be just right for mating, and the hatching stage, and I have lost more larvae in the hatching stage than any other. So learn from my mistakes, and let's talk black soldier fly larvae. The primary feed we currently use for our baby larva is finely ground palm kernel cake that contains a good amount of carbohydrates and protein. And we mix this in a one-to-one -one ratio with used coffee grounds. Now coffee isn't very nutritious, but it does add to the diversity of the feed, which we think has led to our baby larva appearing more vigorous and healthy, but it's just a subjective observation. We mix the feed with water until it becomes like dough or has a Play-Doh-like texture. Now don't worry if you don't have access to ground palm kernel. Almost any nutritious brand that you have access to should work. And I've seen many people have success fermenting whole grains by simply soaking them in water for a few days. And the more tried and true method would be using commercial chicken feed. Now, while nutritious feed is important, it's really the next step that will make or break success at this stage. So here's the best advice I can give you. Don't become an accidental fungi farmer. No, no, fungi farmer. Fung fungal farmer? No, fungi farmer. When we start to use a carbohydrate rich feed for our baby larva, by the time they have hatched and started feeding, Fungus has sometimes already completely taken over our entire feedstock. So what do we do to overcome this? We need a protective barrier. We need a fungal barrier. We need a fungi barrier. <laughs> now, when we don't use a fungi barrier or a protective layer, our feed starts to harden and the baby larva can't move around freely and can't get access to that feed. And I have lost thousands of baby larvae due to this problem. So my initial solution was to use a Zola, a hydroponically grown Azola, as a top layer or barrier for the fungus. Azola is a floating fern that is high in protein and grows extremely quickly, and I was experimenting with Azola as a potential feed source for fish. Because it has a high protein content, I figured it could also be a good feed source for baby larva. So I started layering it on top of my feed mixture and was able to completely eliminate the fungal growth that was causing so many of my baby larvae to die. Azola, however, does require a lot of space to grow, and so I searched for affordable alternatives and have currently settled on rice husks. I soak the rice husks in water overnight prior to layering it on top of my primary feed. The downside of rice husks is that they will likely never be eaten by the larva, but they are effective and affordable. When the moisture level is controlled correctly, the feed turns into a mixture of baby larva and frass that has the texture of fluffy compost and does not have a strong odor and it can easily be added to your primary food waste after the larva reach the age of five days old. So we put our eggs and baby larva feed in a container with a mesh lid that allows for adequate airflow, helps us control the humidity a little bit, and definitely protects them from any other animals. Now let's talk timing. Depending on your hatchery environment, your eggs should hatch after about three to five days. 
This means you want to be collecting your eggs from your love cage at least every three days so they don't start hatching in your love cage, which is something you really don't want. And if you want your larvae to be more uniform in size, you may consider collecting them every day, which will also help you when you harvest your adult larvae as they will all prepupate at about the same time. Mastering the techniques for preparing the correct food and the correct growing environment for hatching black soldier fly eggs is so critically important. It's the equivalent to germinating seeds in the plant world. If you can't establish healthy plant growth, they may never make it out into the garden. Likewise, no matter how many eggs you're able to collect, or how good your process is for growing larvae out to maturity, if we can't master the hatching stage, it's very difficult to get repeatable results. I really hope this video gave you a few good tips that you can experiment with on your own. I want to say thanks so much for watching. Let's keep on conserving water and grow a blue thumb.